let me just uh, uh, switch gears a little bit because I was listening this morning to your uh, conversation with Glenn Lowry, the one I think that got you in the in the most trouble from uh, late 2021. Um, and you know, it's interesting. A lot of people will uh, um, you make an argument that I, I think some people, you know, um, some people think, but not a lot of people say. So you're worried about. Asian immigration, and it's different from, you know, other sort of minority problems that people are used to talking about. Can you uh, talk about that a little bit? Like, what's the, what's the concern with Asian immigration if they're doing socioeconomically well? Well, yeah, they are doing socioeconomically well. Um, that's for sure. I mean, you know, low crime rates, uh, high educational achievement, strong families, and all of that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I had... I had had an interchange with George Lee, who's a friend of mine on the Substack. That's what got me in trouble. The first topic we took up is why do Asians vote for Democrats, uh, given that Democrats are pledged to destroy the meritocracy, which is, you know, creates the ladder that enables Asians to rise and succeed. Why would they want to uh, pull that ladder down? Um, I have no ready explanation for that. Um, I think that the Democrats are advancing all sorts of pernicious and destructive policies. And so I'm not too keen on seeing more Democratic voters coming into the country. So one of the things I said is, you know, if, if Asians continue to vote overwhelmingly for Democrats, I mean, there has been a little bit of a move away from that, but not much. You know, the data, you know, that's one reason to not be in favor of this sort of vast influx of, of Asians. I mean, I really would rather see Republicans elected, frankly. Yeah. What if, what um, if Hispanics keep moving Republican now that they're almost even some, some polls, they, 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 they disapprove of Biden more than whites. What if the, what if that shift continues and they become, they become Republican? Would that be a good reason to support Hispanic immigration? Well, there is some movement in that direction, but if you step back and look overall at the percentage of Asians that vote Democrat versus Republican it is still overwhelmingly Democrat. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm I saying the, the, the so you have a friends. very long way to go. A yeah. very, very long way to go. Um, and, you know, on, on Tucker, I was also criticizing what I think is a very opportunistic attitude that some Asians have, especially South Asians for some reason, um, who tend to be at the barricades supporting diversity, inclusion, and equity programs when, in fact, they're wildly successful. I don't know why they keep trying to paint the United States as some kind of racist country uh, when there's no evidence that they've been victimized by racism. So that, that's a little bit disturbing, too. But also, you know, the fact is Asian culture is very different from our culture. Uh, it just is. It's, it's not a post-Enlightenment culture. It's not a Western culture. Uh, it, it is not a, a sort of liberty-focused culture. It is a conformist culture. These are broad generalizations. I understand that. And there are, of course, exceptions in every population. Um, but, you know, critical masses of people from certain backgrounds do change the culture. It's interesting. I don't know if you follow a website called Education Realist. I've seen um, it. Yeah. A teacher who writes a lot about education. And he says, well, I can tell you one thing, you know, a huge influx of Asians into a particular school changes the educational culture. It results in a laser focus on test scores. And, you know, I'm all for tests and I think tests are significant. Um, but a laser focus on test scores and gaming tests and doing well on tests, uh, that does shift the culture of a school. And ironically, we now see white flight out of schools that are dominated by Asians because whites don't necessarily share the mix of values about education that Asians do. Now, we can argue all day about, you know, which is better, which is good, which is bad. Um, what the upsides are and the downsides. But the point I'm making is uh, there are culturally distinct traits for people from different countries, cultures, backgrounds. And when you have a large number of people coming in from a particular culture, it does shift the existing culture. I mean, that's just a fact. 
And, and people ought to be talking about that. I mean, it is not illegitimate to say, you know, we want to go slow on immigration because we don't want drastic changes. We like the culture that we have. We like the country the way it is. We don't want to see it change. Those people are not presumptively evil people. I mean, that's kind of like what Trump was saying in a way. That's what he appealed to. I know you can't say anything good about Trump now. I understand that. Um, that's forbidden. That's forbidden. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of people who like to be around people like themselves who don't want to see their country turn into a polyglot boarding house. Those people deserve to be heard. Well, what, Amy, what about, I mean, when you talk about the school change, I mean, I'm a big fan of school choice. I'm a big fan of freedom of association. I mean, so, you know, why not, why not work out, you know, the, the, just the, the, you know, the idea that, you know, Asians, I think you have to sort of break them up into different categories. I, I see the Indian representation in DEI. East Asians seem to be massive. They met punch massively below their weight as far as country, cultural influence, given their socioeconomic status. You know, I, I don't see them really, you know, I think you're right. They are conformists, but that makes them sort of not as, not as culturally relevant. So, you know, I sort of see a, a lot of groups like this, especially East Asians as sort of, able to go, um, in any, any direction. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, you know, what, what about just, you know, the old, you know, sort of conservative ideas of school choice, freedom of association. I, I think that goes a long way to solving a lot of these problems, doesn't it? Well, you know, I'm all for freedom of association. I'm a big freedom of association fan, just as you are. Um, and I would deregulate, you know, all of the laws that force people together who don't want to be together. Uh, you know, as you might. But here's the problem, Richard. Our culture is moving in exactly the opposite direction. The ruling class, the people in power, especially the people, the sort of people with cultural power on the left, the lefties who, uh, you know, control all the opinion shaping institutions, they hate freedom of association, except when they're summering in Nantucket or whatever. Uh, you know, they never talk about it. They, in fact, of course, are are fleeing diversity even more than anyone else. But, uh, you know, they they profess to love it and to see it as the paramount value. And therefore, any rules for the little people, right, that allow them to choose, self-segregate, um, you know, uh, get away from the people they want to get away from, you know, be with the people they want to be with, uh, those are not going to fly. Um, so you're really asking for a very countercultural project here. Uh, and I just don't see it happening. Yeah. I mean, stopping, you know, the flow of people across borders, given the economic incentives, I think is also a, a sort of very difficult thing too. And, you know, I think the freedom of association thing is, you know, is, is good to do anyway, because it's, I think it solves, um, a lot of these, a lot of these problems. Um, the, no, we uh, see that issue differently. I mean, I, from having read your, your stuff and followed your Twitter and, and, you know, your Substack, I know that you're, um, not as enamored of, of, you know, national identity borders, uh, nationhood as I am for sure. And I, I get that. I understand that. Um, but I really think that, the ordinary people, the little people, the common people, they care about this stuff. They really care about well, it. I, I'm sure, I'm sure they do. But, but, the, but the, I mean, if you look at the sort of the, the sort of where the antagonisms in, are in this country, I mean, I think the people like rural white Americans, I think they hate liberal elites, you know, more than they dislike, you know, any being around any immigrant group. So, uh, you know, I get that people want to be around those, you know, who are like themselves, but, you know, we, we have this, you know, it's sort of to talk about this common American culture. I mean, I just see, you know, I, I, I don't, have much in common with liberals. I think they're the craziest people on earth. I mean, give me a, a person who just arrived here from Guatemala as far as, you know, my, my values. They they, they, are, they do not believe in, you know, gender uh, fluidity. They don't believe that criminals are good. So, you know, it's it's for, to me, I mean, I agree with, you know, we, we're sort of on the same page with a lot of these cultural critiques. Um, you know, I just see the people who are running this culture, the most distant people in the world for me. So it's hard for me to get sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, concerned about these immigrants arriving who in many ways seem better actually. 
I understand that. And there are a lot of people who uh, agree with you. I, I see the country as, and here, this is both a positive point and a normative point, uh, less and less, I think, a positive point because our country has become so much more diverse very, very rapidly, which, by the way, is a choice, uh, not an inevitability. But I see the importance of the kind of Western European stamp in this country, and especially the kind of Anglo-European stamp and our traditions as incredibly important to our character, to our success, um, to, you know, why our government works, why our country works. Take a factor, I'll, I'll mention a factor I think is routinely underestimated, low corruption. Low corruption is exclusively almost exclusively a Northern European and Anglo phenomenon, okay? Uh, it, it virtually doesn't exist in any other part of the globe. I mean, a little bit in Central Europe, it's kind of Teutonic, uh, as well as Nordic and Anglo. And it is of outsized importance in why those countries, you know, are as wonderful as they are and why those countries can have nice things and why they're so successful, and why everybody wants to go to them, okay? And we, of course, inherited that low corruption trait. That doesn't mean we were perfect and had no corruption, but relatively speaking, until recently, we've done pretty well with good government and civically-minded, other-directed government, because that was our, um, we've inherited that, you know, those are the traditions that we've taken from our founding and our origins. And to see those diluted, I am very frightened that they are going to be diluted when we have influxes, large influxes of people from places where corruption is endemic. Okay? I already see it happening. We are, we are turning from a first world country into a third world country in so many ways that nobody wants to talk about. Uh, and that, you know, it's, it's suspect to talk about that you can get into trouble for talking about, I get into trouble, but I really think that this is a really important thing and it means preserving, protecting and defending what we have, keeping, you know, tight, a tight lid on immigration, not letting any one group or any third world group certainly get too large and all of that sort of thing. 